That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Night Swim, the directorial debut of Bryce McGuire, which Universal is releasing January 5th, 2024. The premise, after the Waller family move into a new house, they find an unknown supernatural presence haunts the backyard swimming pool. What's your pull quote? Yet another suburban white family imperiled by a pseudo-folk horror entity assists in making Night Swim a forgettable belly flop, which is unfortunate considering its cast and story potential. Mine. Night Swim has some slick ideas but ultimately left me feeling dry. Yeah, this was a thumbs down. Yeah, which is too bad because there are moments where I'm like, okay, this is weird in a way that I don't hate. Let's go with it. And then it just uh, kind of bungles itself. I liked the cast, but the story, it's frustrating because within this movie, I feel like some rearrangements could have been made to the story that would have made this so much more fun. Or subversive. Or subversive, but the way it is, it's not fun. Uh, there were people laughing at the screening. I think they were laughing at the movie. Yes, because some of the actions made and statements made by the characters are absolutely inane. And would, you know, this is based on an earlier short that Bryce McGuire and his screenwriter Rod Blackhurst made in 2014. Okay, so the story. We see that in 1992 in this house in Minnesota that a young girl who lives in the home is in the pool and something happens to her, like something grabs her. We don't know what it is. Then we flash forward 30 years and we see the Waller family comprised of dad, mom, and the two children are looking for a place to live. And they look at a couple of places but settle on this house with the pool. They buy it, move in, and weird things start to happen. But it's important to know the dad used to play professional baseball. Third baseman. Who's played by? Wyatt Russell. And he had to stop because he's dealing with uh, multiple sclerosis. So I guess he's retired. And the mom is going back to school and is going to be working at like a middle school. In, in administrative. And I have questions about their financial situation. We can get to uh, it. But, but That's played by recent Oscar nominee Carrie Condon. What does she get nominated for? The Banshees of Inna Sharon. Oh. I, I like the cast. I thought they did the best they could with this. But we see that while the dad is seemingly getting better, like he goes to the doctor and the doctor's like, your test results are remarkable. Like rarely do people improve in this situation. But the mother and the two children, they start seeing weird things in the pool. Mm -hmm. So what's going on? It's very simple. This pool, we're told by the pool guy, gets its water from like a natural well. And then the mother, after weird things starts happening, she does some light Googling. Very light. And mm -hmm. figures out the, who the mother is of that girl who we saw in 1992. So she goes to that mom. Live, they live not far. Played by the mom from All American Girl. That's Jodie Long. She's also in the hot show. That's how I know her. Mm -hmm. um, she looks fantastic. Yeah, she looks too. Great. But and she's playing a sickly woman. She looked great. She explains that that's basically a wishing well. And it'll grant a wish, but in return, it needs a sacrifice, like another life. So this mother explains that um, that back in 1992, her son was very sick. So she basically sacrificed her daughter, the girl we see in the beginning get attacked, so that her son could be healthy. It's very Sophie's choice. And we can talk more about that, that mom, because I don't understand why she's still dealing with the evil entity. So basically what's happening to this Waller family is that I guess the dad wished to be better. Mm -hmm. So it's curing his MS, but then the water, the wishing well, wants the son, Elliot. Because he's the... Because he's kind of he's like... He's the runt of the family. Yeah, basically. like the dad at one point, being possessed by this supernatural thing, says that Elliot, you know, he doesn't have any friends. He's basically like a loser anyway, so might as well sacrifice and, his ass. And there's all this subtext about when his daughter Izzy was born, he was playing ball, and he had a surge of strength. So, in the end, we see that the dad is trying to kill Elliot. But the, we need to talk about more about how the daughter beats the evil out of her dad's ass, which made no sense to be. So now he's back to his senses. And he under, he also understands that a sacrifice needs to be made. 
even though no one explained that to him. Uh -huh. So I guess the demon did. So then the dad decides he'll sacrifice himself. And his entire family watches him walk into the pool and just die, I guess. And then the family moves on. So now everything's great and they f cover the pool with dirt at the end. And they decide not to leave the property because, as the daughter says, dad wouldn't like that. Okay, I think we should start with what would have worked better. First of all, I don't know why this movie's not called The Wishing Well. And I don't know why they don't have Terrence Trent Darby's song Wishing Well in the movie. Oh, I was thinking Skilos, I Wish. Yeah, so many things could have worked. But also the story, why you had good ideas and so did I, I thought. But basically, like, why didn't they have it be more subversive where this family learns early on the capabilities of this water? And maybe either, like you said, which I liked, was they each sort of secretly try to fulfill a wish. And If this water, this because um, it's basically poltergeist meets wish upon because they're built on top of this, this ancient wishing well, as we're told, uh, it doesn't make sense that this house would go empty for years before a family might come in and then the pool, the entity can, or whatever it is, can play these games. They, sh they sh it should want the family that's living there to stay there and procure for it. So right. what, the rules of this thing don't make any sense. But what would be more interesting is if each family member is... Because they're all aware of the thing in the pool, which is also stupid of the entity, I think, uh, because that allows... But why is it playing with them? Though? Right, that gives them yeah. the agency to stop it. Uh, but why isn't it tempting all of them with something that they need because everybody has a wish? I don't understand how it, it's the pool is choosing which person is the most vulnerable towards its charms. I don't know. So then there's a there's a moment where the family decides to have a big pool party to get to know the neighbors and make friends. So they have this <clears throat> amazing pool party. And I just thought, wouldn't it have been more fun if this family knowingly invites all these people over, hoping that the pool takes its sacrifice? Mm -hmm. Like, that could have just been such an easy thing to do. What also doesn't make sense about that is this is a suburban Minnesota uh, area and nobody knows about the history from the light of the googling house. we find out that many people have gone missing as a result of this pool and like you just said how does no one because the realtor wasn't going to show them this house in the first place but she goes i did i didn't realize till after you closed that this was that house like, but then okay. it's clear that that's not true and then also all these people show up to this pool party at this house and no one mentions i needed to better understand like how did all these people go missing also when the dad die or i guess sacrifices himself we're made to understand that these bodies just vanish so did the family get the insurance money if there's no i don't know it's well right that's that's a consideration <laughs> to me babe but it's funny because why you know why russell is fine he certainly does not have the screen presence of his father i liked him I, I liked everyone everyone's fine carrie condon i think does the best but i mean it's you know it's hard living under the shadow of Kurt, I'm sure. But he has his affect, though, because when he, the do you're going to talk more about this, but when she, you know, slaps the evil out of him and he wakes up and sees that his son is, like, convulsing on the ground, he's very blasé. He goes, is he okay? Uh, he also has a moment where he kind of whispers to himself, someone has to pay. And my, my thought was, yeah, the mortgage. <laughs> Okay, let me get through these notes. So, the opening in 1992, we see that the little girl goes out to the pool to get this toy boat. Which I'm like, does she really need to go out at like midnight to grab this stupid toy boat? And then we see the toy boat again. It's her sick brothers. It's disappeared. It, like, I, I knew we were in trouble because the opening was real weak. Yes. Before the credits pop up. Then, the trailer for this film shows that Marco Polo scene with which end up, ends up being the teenage daughter with this boy she likes from school named Ray, Ronan, I think. That scene was weak to me. I mean, it's literally it's literally the sunken place, and all those shots look really cool. Um, the one thing I did, I mean, besides the cast, I thought them being fine. I think there are some really cool visuals. I mean, and the, it was uh, lensed by Charlie Seroff, who also did that film Relic, which we liked, and Smile. So the school that the kids are going to and that the mom is going to be working in, the school mascot is Lake Trout, mm -hmm. which I thought was so silly. But the boy who the daughter likes, Ronan, 
he's I guess like really religious and on the swim team. A Christian swim and team. he invites her and the flyer he gives her says swim for him, him being Jesus. And I thought that was funny, like the the way the flyer looked and Do you mean capital H I M? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and again I thought wouldn't it have made more sense if each family member is like bringing someone to the pool they don't like? So maybe this boy who shamed her, this like silly Christian boy who made her feel bad and so she brings him to the pool or like how Elliot maybe is being bullied so he invites his bullies to the pool and maybe a bitchy neighbor the mom doesn't like she invites her ass over that's what I thought we might get yeah something fun no not at all considering the ridiculousness of this story okay the real estate agent she was a bit much she's real pushy and nosy when they're looking at the two properties which I thought might lead to something more interesting. No, in fact, the scene where the Googling happens and Carrie Condon calls her again, she's like, are you an open-minded woman? <laughs> what does that matter? Who cares? So, Did you know about all these dead people? <laughs> so when they decide to buy the house with the pool, let's talk about their finances because we're told that she has to work while she goes back to school to get her degree to teach like special education. So she's gonna work like an admin job at her kid's school. And then we're told the husband doesn't work because he's on, you know, like disabled, I guess. And then we're also told that they only have health insurance because of her job. But then they buy this house. Like the points made that this house is not for rent, you'd have to buy it. Mm -hmm. So then I'm confused, like, because to me it would have made sense to demonstrate they're having financial trouble. But the way this movie plays out, it would seem that they're not because they're able to buy a house with, if, with cash, I'm assuming. If they can buy this house based on his the salary he once had and fix the pool. And then we <laughs> see them fix the pool, which I'm getting to the pool guy. But then we also get a scene where we see her sitting at a table writing a check. Mm -hmm. So then I thought, oh, they're going to explain that maybe they're running out of money. So then, but they don't. So that check writing scene felt unnecessary. Mm -hmm. I just wanted something to motivate them to stay in this house and maybe wish for something better to happen. We never actually hear the dad wish for anything. He does tell the doctor, like his like rehab doctor, that he's excited because he has a pool in his new house so he can do water therapy. Free rehabilitated therapy. At the bare minimum, shouldn't we have had a scene where the dad gets in the water and says, I wish I could feel better? Or something like well, that's where like it's a wishing well. That, that's where the film chooses to be more subtle, oddly, with the coins thrown in the bottom of the pool, which is a custom that do people still is that really something people still do? So we learn from the pool guy, who I thought was like a genuinely funny moment because he's kind of acting over the top, and then he explains, "Oh, this is interesting. I've never seen this before, but your pool is um, being." sourced by like well water which is super unique to this area now mm -hmm. so that's when we realize like oh then you assume poltergeist like is this house built on top of like some sort of burial ground and then he explains another scene that everyone laughed at was the pool guy saying isn't it odd that like we evolved from like humans you know if you believe in evolution perhaps evolved from out of the water but we really don't belong there. Mm -hmm. So he's saying like, you know, you shouldn't be in this water. I thought that was, again, going to lead to something more interesting. Then they have a cat who doesn't like the pool. Named Cider. And the cat goes missing. So the I guess the pool took it. Don't know why. Well, because it wants objects to draw people in. But right. then all these people are always in the pool. So why doesn't it just... They're already snatch, in the pool. So why doesn't it just snatch them then? Right. Like, why do you... Why does... Uh, what's the little boy's name? Elliot? Elliot. Why does he have to be drawn in by meowing cat? The, the boy is in the pool all the time. And the pool can seemingly just snatch people up and make them disappear. So that was my biggest thought is what you just said. Mm -hmm. why, yeah. why is it playing with these people when they're always in the pool? But my question about the cat was... The cat goes missing and the family goes out into the yard and they're calling for it. And the cat's name is Cider. But then they're also calling it Puss. So my question was, does anyone call their cat Puss? That's like from my grandmother. That feels like old time. Generation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to hear these people saying, hey, the, Puss. The healing powers of the, uh, of the devil. <laughs> Essentially, uh, it reminded me of uh, remember Cheche and his stanky leg in Dominion, the Exorcist prequel. Oh, god, remember how the yes. devil heals his leg? 
So speaking of healing, we see that the dad earlier on cuts his hand pretty bad trying to fix the filter in the pool, bandages it up. And then now that he's feeling better from the pool water, we see that his hand is magically healed. So then again, thinking like, oh, so this, like, are they going to use this to their advantage? No. Just... Well, we yeah, have like, this is, and to me that signified this could be like some kind of uh, perverse satanic mecca, like, like Lords. Right. <laughs> Okay, so this is totally random. I didn't realize I was wearing this shirt for this video, but the address to the house they're living in is 1814. And I just realized that I'm wearing an 1814 shirt. And of course, I have the 1814 tattoo, yes, which was, is a reference. There was, to there was a gasp Janet Jackson. by you, and I thought I'd missed something. Nope, that's it. Uh, so the little girl who went missing in the beginning of the film, her name is Rebecca Summers. Mm -hmm. And we see at one point when Elliot is in the pool, again, the pool water the, has every opportunity to steal this little boy. We see that he's being spoken to by Rebecca. And one genuinely creepy scene is that we see Rebecca's like in the filter of the pool and she grabs Elliot. We see just a flash of her head. In, and eyes. It, which reminded me of kind of of the girl under the stove moment in A Tale of Two Sisters. Oh. Like just a, a bright, like a quick cut that is very effective. An interesting moment is the dad, this ex-professional baseball player, agrees to go to Elliot's school to like play with the kids, like show them baseball. And I just thought just being at a baseball practice gave me more anxiety. Like the thought of me having to go to baseball practice made me more scared than this movie. <laughs> well, but in the and, end... And, and I feel like that scene was a little underwhelming too. Because I think we're supposed to prove that Elliot can't do shit. But he does. But he does. Like he does hit the ball. And then the dad, we see he struggles initially mm -hmm. because he's... You although know. although he does say under his breath like oh we'll work we'll work on it I'm like okay and then the dad hits like a major home run I guess which, which makes him feel good what's the saying in the, is it the Joaquin Phoenix character in Signs about swing away okay the trailer scene Marco Polo with that boy Ronan that was so confusing to me because we see that the daughter is in the pool and then she has this boy who she's invited over without her parents permission and at a point he gets out of the water while her eyes are closed and somehow she couldn't hear that he got out of the water. And then that's when, as we see in the trailer, things start grabbing at her. And then finally, when she's able to escape it, Ronan's in the water and he's like, what happened to you? Like, you were, you, I was, you were only under for like a couple seconds. But to her in the audience, it felt like a long time. So I guess that scene was to establish that when you're under the water and being affected by the supernatural entity time and space is different sure but that scene was not that creepy at all it's, and it didn't make sense to me a literal sunken place and that's the trailer so yeah that's I not mean, a very good scene i think if you did if you weren't impressed by the trailer for this movie then you probably wouldn't be impressed with this movie okay the pool party these fake ass neighbors coming over and the one lady who brings over the watermelon and the mom is like oh you shouldn't have done that a watermelon? That I gotta chop up? She didn't even chop it up. Like, that's not hard to do. She made it seem like she brought like a $600 charcuterie board. And she just brought a watermelon girl. And that's the lady that acts real crazy because there's an incident with her son. So the dad, it, what, like they're playing that game where like the one person, chicken. chicken. And the dad ends up having like a spasm because of the spirit and almost drowns this boy. So the boy's parents... Are of course super upset we see the police come and the mom wants to press charges of the kid but then the the main mom is saying you know he has ms he probably had like a seizure and grabbed him you know he wouldn't do that and then the the father of the kid goes okay we won't press charges and the mom yells at her like i don't ever want you around my kid again bitch i work at the school okay i'm gonna see his ass like you really think my husband tried to kill your kid like yeah, it's, uh, well, it, it, I mean, I would have, as a parent, I'm sure I would have been weirded out as well, but it's like, you can have that conversation in the car and just be like, we're not going I just over thought there, that dude. was a poorly written, clunky, like, it, what was even the purpose of us seeing the parents be mad? It's over the top and clunky. It didn't need to be that. And, and there's, there's a way that could have been strange and fun. Then all of a sudden, the mom, like the next day, and it's raining, the mom... Because the dad does something weird 
And the mom packs up her kids in the car and just leaves. That's one of the segues. The, the film cuts, what it's doing is cutting too many corners with its lore, uh, with the rules of what's going on. And Carrie Condon has to kind of overcompensate a lot for some, some junks that, that don't make any sense. They felt very extreme and sudden. One of those is like, because suddenly she's like, there's something wrong with the pool. We have to leave the house. Like, how did you get to that conclusion? Just, just like when she goes over to Jody Long's house and she, through, oh, yeah. through Carrie Condon's facial expressions, it makes it apparent that we're supposed to believe that the water from the house is also in this water fountain that's strangely placed in this beautiful home. What's that lady's name again? Jody Long. Yeah, I didn't understand if Jody Long's character provided the sacrifice for her daughter 30 years ago so her son could be healthy. And she tells us, yeah, my son's doing well. He's in the room over there. We never see him. Why is she still affected by the spirit? And why is the water in her house, like you said, affected? Like, what, why does what she, are the rules? Why is she still waterlogged? She's got this brackish water coming out of her eyeballs. Like, why? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't she pay her penance? She doesn't even live there anymore. So the end of the film, we see that Elliot gets tricked into the pool because it thinks El Elliot thinks that he sees his cat. And then there's a pool cover and the evil spirit, you know, covers the pool while Elliot's under. So then we get his mom diving in to help him. And that was an interesting scene because she like attaches a water hose and then I thought, is she using the water hose to breathe Initially, underwater? Initially, yeah. I thought that was weird. Then she ultimately grabs him. I did think the visuals looked cool. Mm -hmm. And then it's at that moment that Rebecca pops up and tries to trick the mom by making her think that up is down so that she'll keep swimming deeper. But then the mom realizes that the... It almost reminded me of that stupid movie, uh, I think it's M. Night Shyamalan, where the, the the jelly falls down face up or uh, toast devil jelly side up or lady in the wall yeah the coin as she flips it the coin goes the other way so the mom knows to go up mm -hmm. the end like they that's when the dad sacrifices himself but I thought when the son because the son starts to become possessed and starts to die before the dad sacrifices himself and I thought the boy reminded me of someone and I'm not sure who. Initially, I thought he looked like Zendaya. But when he's being possessed and looks even more severe, I thought he looked like if you mix Maria Shriver and Natalie Morales. <laughs> oh, my. Well, that's a mixture, huh? Yes. Strong in the face. Um, that's all And I then have. the closing credit song I thought was interesting. What was it? Don't you remember? No. Because you were like, what is this music? It was called Deeper oh that's right but i kind of want to put it on my mix I, I looked it up well it's by someone called a band called even beyond even beyond oh very so uh, they're very beyond that's very uh modernism that's very gertrude stein to me sorry to this to, to these people <laughs> but i thought this movie was i mean they tried but it doesn't work again it's just like there, all of these elements are curiously in place, and if only there was some more daring attempts made with storytelling. Like, the easiest part to kind of finesse ahead of time. And I don't know if that's just because Jason Blum and James Wan now want to just churn all this B-grade stuff out there that feels like it's a nostalgic nod to, uh, you know, I thought of several Toby Hooper movies besides Poltergeist. The Mangler, this possessed uh, apparatus that is driving the story, but I don't know. All I could think, I kept thinking of also T.S. Eliot, the last line of uh, The Wastelands and adding, till human logic wakes us and we drown. What would you give Night Swim? Two, and I think that's being nice. Yeah, I would give it two out of five, mainly because I liked the cast, but this story is caca. Yeah. Anything else? No. Join us on Patreon and listen to our podcast. Bye. Oh, 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 o